so there is no guarantee given the situation there is no guarantee that uh, prices will go down and if you have lots of money and you can risk that amount of thing because suddenly you will buy somebody's share thinking that this is a very good share and it turns out to be gautam adani's share <laughs> and then you lose all your money The Reserve Bank of India on 8th February increased the repo rate by 25 basis points to 6.50% in a bid to rein in retail inflation. This is a cumulative rise of 250 basis points in the repo rate since May last year. The MIM MP from Maharashtra Intaj Jalil pointed in the Lok Sabha that RBI repo rate has been rising since May 2022. 4 May 2022 ko 4.40 hamara repo rate tha 8 mahine ke andar छह मरतबा रेपो रेट बढ़ाया गया है और अब ये रेपो रेट हो गया है 6.50 पॉइंट जब रेपो रेट बढ़ाता है तो किसी ने 20 साल के लिए होम लोन लिया है यानी कि 240 महीने के लिए लोन लिया है और रेपो रेट सवा दो परसेंट से बढ़ गया है तो 120 से 160 महीने का एडिशनल ईएमआई उसको भरना पड़ता है किसी ने 25 साल के लिए यानी कि 300 महीने के लिए लोन लिया है और अगर सवा दो परसेंट से रेपो रेट बढ़ गया है तो उसे 199 महीने एडिशनल ईएमआई देना पड़ता है so is this fast rise in the repo rate a worrying sign for the indian economy let's have a look at what this increase will mean for your wallets the repo rate is the interest at which the rbi gives short term loans to commercial banks the rbi is basically the bank of all banks just like a common man could go to a bank when he or she requires a loan the banks go to the rbi for loans the rate at which they borrow money from the rbi is called the repo rate for such borrowings banks have to pledge certain government securities the repo rate is increased or decreased by the rbi depending on the inflation levels in the country say inflation in the economy is rising this means that the general price level prevailing in the market is rising in such a situation to arrest inflation the central bank would want to reduce the money supply in the economy for this rbi may increase repo rates which will make it difficult for the banks to borrow money from the rbi ultimately reducing the cash flow in the economy The only way the central bank has to fight inflation is to make money costlier by hiking rates and tightening cash flow in the system. The idea is to bring down demand which will in turn contain high prices. So, even this current increase in the repo rate is a bid to bring down the level of inflation in the country. Of late inflation in India unexpectedly eased to 5.72% in December 2022 from 5.88% in November beating market forecasts of 5.9%. Inflation in India has been high since January 2022. In April, May, June and August last year, it was about 7%. The RBI's tolerance limit lies between 2 and 6%. But how does an increase in repo rate impact inflation? It has both a positive and negative impact on the people. One, after the RBI increases the repo rate, commercial banks increase the interest rates on deposit accounts for customers to increase the cash at the bank's disposal. Customers get higher return on their savings. so they prefer to keep their money in the banks it reduces the money in circulation thus the demand falls with a constant supply the prices also cool down secondly the banks hike the interest charges on loans like home loans car loans etc this makes loans costlier for consumers so the common man prefers to take fewer loans reducing the money at their disposal this however is a very general idea of how inflation demand and repo rate are connected To explain the direct impact of the repo rate on the aam aadmi, we have with us Mr. Amirullah Khan. He is a professor of economics and research director at the Center for Development Policy and Practice. He will tell us why, despite the inflation rate going down, there is an increase in the repo rate. Uh, so the repo rate has nothing to do with you and me. It is not something that concerns the citizen at all. The this is the rate that the RBI collects from banks who borrow from the RBI. But why is it important to know what it is and what is the problem if repo rate goes up? So let me explain that. Your bank, say State Bank of India, uh, is giving you a loan and is charging you six percent interest. Now. why is it charging you 6% interest rate it is charging you that because when it is borrowing from the reserve bank of india the reserve bank is giving the money at 4% mm. so the cost 
to SBI is 4%. It gives you a loan at 6%, which means that 2% is what the State Bank of India earns. Right. That is what they use to pay their salaries, pay their uh, shareholders and so on. Now, suppose, now what happens is that the Reserve Bank then sees that a lot of people are borrowing money. 6% is a very low rate. A lot of people are borrowing money. They are buying cars. They are buying uh, houses. They are buying uh, cell phones. They are buying uh, refrigerators. And therefore, the demand for all these goods becomes very high because everybody is able to borrow at a low rate and buy these items. But because the demand is high, obviously what happens is that the price goes up. Whenever any demand increases, the price increases in anything, any good services. Some people find that their salaries go up. Why do their salaries go up? Uh, why do, for example, Zishan's salary go up uh, when uh, he is uh, a, photo, uh, a news journalist? Because the demand for news journalists has gone up. There are few news journalists and therefore the per capita cost of news journalists goes up and therefore his wages go up. Why does petrol become more expensive? Because there are more people who are buying cars, so therefore more people need petrol and therefore the petrol price rises. Similarly with money, that when a lot of people start borrowing money, right? mm. firstly what happens is that they borrow money and they buy these things, they buy laptops and phones and watches and shoes and therefore the, call, the demand for all that goes up and that is why prices go up. The second is that because the Reserve Bank of India is giving money at a low rate, so banks are giving money at a low rate and therefore there is a lot of money in the economy. Mm. So prices go up either because there is a lot of money in the economy and because that money that is there in the economy is used by people to purchase more and more. Okay. So on one hand, an economy where a lot of people are consuming more and more is a good economy because that is where uh, because when consumption goes up, production also goes up. When production goes up, employment goes up. So everybody is happy. However, the problem comes when people buy buy more than what is being produced. And that is when okay. inflation comes or prices become high. That is when the Reserve Bank of India says, oh, our, uh, we have to do something about reducing prices. What can they do? They can't come to everybody and say, don't buy Instead of that, what they do is they increase the interest rate. They now give State Bank of India, uh, they give them loans at 5% or 6%, which means that State Bank of India has to increase the interest rate on the on the loan that you are taking from State Bank. Right. As a result, as a result, money becomes expensive. You were borrowing at 6% earlier, now you are borrowing at 8% that this repo rate that has gone up, okay. what it means is that the loans have become more expensive, which means that you find it more difficult to borrow money. And therefore, you, you slowly reduce the amount of goods you, you're buying. So you buy less motorcycles, less cell phones, less iPads, uh, mm. less houses. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the money in the economy mm. comes down. Okay. And therefore, prices come down when the supply, when the when the demand goes down, mm -hmm. just as in the earlier case, the demand was going up, so prices mm -hmm. went up. Now, price now demand is going down, so prices. prices right, and right. that is how the Reserve Bank of India controls inflation. Mm -hmm. This is what is this is what in economics is broadly known as monetary policy. So what happens is that when we measure inflation or measure price rise, what is the base price? See, what does price rise mean? Price rise means that today my coffee costs 12 rupees and last year it cost 10 rupees, which means that the inflation has gone up by 20%. If you compare the coffee price to 20 years ago, when it was 6 rupees, then the inflation is 150%, right? Or 100%. So, inflation depends on what you are comparing it against. If you are comparing price today versus price six months ago, then the price, then the inflation rate has come down. Price hasn't come down. 
the inflation rate has come down meaning that the price is not going up at the same rate as it was going up it is going up but it is going up slower which means that inflation price rise itself is still high meaning that the coffee that you were buying for 10 rupees last year it went up to 15 rupees in in one month after that it is only increasing by 10 paisa every day so the inflation rate is down but the prices are continuously going up and that is why the rbi wants to control inflation it wants to you know prices shouldn't go up prices should stay where they are in fact in a good economy prices should come down why should prices come down because when it is when prices come down that customers buy more and producers always try to reduce prices so that they are able to sell more it is an unnatural market it is there is something wrong in a market where prices are going up it means that the producers are not being able to produce at the rate at which uh, people who demand goods are demanding goods therefore the reserve bank of india says let us keep the repo rate high till the it's till not just the inflation but prices also come down when prices come down then we can then uh, you know we can lower the repo rate yeah so you see one of the factors in price reduction is the repo rate is the interest rate but there are other factors also for example why are petrol prices high petrol prices are not high because the repo rate is low prices uh, petrol prices are high because russia is fighting ukraine that the reserve bank can't do anything about like right? that the finance ministry also can't do anything about so uh, inflation has a number of reasons the other reason for inflation will be that uh, that you know there is uh, there is a lack of public transport in the country so everybody is driving their own cars even if the fuel is high uh, and therefore fuel demand is higher and therefore prices keep going up uh, the inflation can be high because there is a failure in the agriculture market in the crop market and therefore prices can be high prices can also be high because the rupee is at its weakest ever the rupee is at 82 rupees so anything that you import and all and today we import a lot of things the phone you are using the airpods you are using the charger you are using the air conditioner all these are imported so because the rupee is now cheaper the price of that imported good has gone up so inflation goes up because of a variety of reasons one of those reasons is interest rate and it is an important reason and it is a reason that is in our control that our rbi can do anything about rbi our rbi can't do too much about foreign production mm. foreign disruptions it can't even do very much about exchange rate it tries to do mm. it tries to sell dollars to maintain the exchange rate constant but that is a very temporary measure and it's a very expensive measure so okay. there is no guarantee given the situation there is no guarantee that uh, prices will go down uh, that's a very good point you see uh, saving is always a good option uh, saving allows you to have a certain amount of money in your bank or in your locker which you can drop draw into when you can uh, when you need the money so saving is always a good option or money that you can you should save now should that saving be kept in fixed deposits should that money be kept in post office accounts should that money be converted into gold or should that money be used to buy shares that is the question uh, most people like me who are safe conservative economists will say don't buy shares and if you have lots of money and you can risk that amount of thing because suddenly you will buy somebody's share thinking that this is a very good share and it turns out to be gautam adani's share <laughs> and then you lose all your money so so therefore be very careful the share market is not for small people for people who save small amounts of money it is for people who have a lot of money to risk 
uh, it gives good dividends often, but it only gives that because you are taking a big risk. You can become, you can go to zero. So I will not say share market. Gold is safe. It keeps going up, but gold prices also you will find that are not constantly going up. Okay. Uh, but it is a safe bet. If you have some money, you can buy some gold. The best method of saving for small small saving accounts is to put that money into into the safest saving instruments like post offices, like railway bonds, you know, like municipal bonds. Here is where your money is 100% safe. It gives you slightly higher returns than what the State Bank of India or the HDFC Bank can give you. It keeps your money uh, in, in a fixed asset for a long time. You know, when you buy a bond, you buy it for five years and six years and seven years. So that is a good method of saving. Of course, another way of saving is to buy uh, a good solid insurance policy. The insurance policy does two things. It saves you from risk, uh, accident or life. And it also keeps your money safe till you can withdraw it. The interest rate is low. The interest rate is lower than the inflation rate. So in effect, if you're putting money into a bank, you're losing a little bit of money every month. But that really doesn't matter because your small savings are safe. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.